Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Here to describe a vertical antenna that a viewer has proposed for construction based on a design by KL7JR, Kilo Lima 7, Juliet Romeo. His design is basically this design, but intended for 20 meters and above, up to 10 meters. It's a half wavelength, therefore tall on 20 meters and longer on the higher bands. The radials basically are as long as possible and as many as possible, but uh, my viewer proposes to make an antenna like this for 40 meters, 7 megahertz, in which case the 33 feet represents one quarter of a wavelength. If you make these radials 33 feet long and as many as possible, you should have a essentially a quarter wave vertical antenna with a ground radial system. And the characteristic impedance, or rather the feed point impedance, the feed point being this green point right here, the feed point impedance of such an antenna, if the ground is theoretically perfect and the radials are horizontal, should be approximately 37 ohms resulting in an SWR with 50 ohm coaxial cable of approximately 1.5 to 1. Well, ideally I recommended to the viewer that he elevate his feed point as much as possible above the ground and ground the shield of the coax at the radio rather than at the antenna feed point. You don't want to ground it at both locations because then you may end up with a ground loop because your station is almost invariably going to have some sort of a ground, be it through the AC wiring of your house at the very least, or possibly to a ground rod, ideally to a ground rod right near your radio. So my recommendation in the case of a fixed station location is to elevate the feed point as much as you can. If you can get it get it a quarter of a wavelength above physical ground, that would be 33 feet, you would in effect have a ground plane antenna. And then you would indeed have a feed point impedance very near 37 ohms. With a 1.5 to 1 SWR, that should be entirely acceptable. Uh, the KL7JR recommended, I'm not sure what he uh, did to tune the antenna, but it looks like he might be doing something similar to what I'm doing at my own home station, which is to force feed it. You use a antenna tuner at the station end and then just simply force feed, regardless of the SWR on the coax, into the antenna. And that will work and produce very good DX results. I know because I have an antenna like that and I only run uh, 10 watts output on CW and I've worked a whole lot of DX with that antenna on bands other than its resonant frequency band of 20 meters. I worked uh, all the bands up to 10 meters and even 6 meters uh, with that antenna by force feeding it. My radials unfortunately are not quite 33 feet long and there aren't very many of them and they're not high enough off the ground but the, the thing still works but if you can get this thing up as high as you can manage above the ground make as many radials as possible 33 feet long you might make them somewhat drooping in which case you would increase this feed point impedance and lower your standing wave ratio a little bit uh, but it would still comprise a ground plane antenna or rather I should say it would constitute I get the words constitute comprise and compose confused all the time it would still constitute a ground plane antenna 
for 40 meters. So uh, the viewer wanted to know if such an arrangement would work, and my answer is a resounding yes, or in CW, da 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 da. C. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Proprietor and operator of W1GV saying 73. And so long, which in CW, my only mode, always translates to da 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 da.